How's it going everyone? So what am I working on now? Well, I have this ultra clean 2002 Lincoln Town Car. Uh, this car is like immaculate inside and out. But anyway, uh, the guy who owns it, uh, he's an ex-mechanic. Uh, he's retired. He's a Vietnam vet. Thank you for your service, Mitch. Um, anyway, so he, whenever he has an issue with his car, he brings it to me because uh, he doesn't work on his stuff anymore. And um, he does a little tinkering here and there. Anyway, so he uh, came to me and he said, hey, I need a left axle replaced. He goes, the uh, the bearing went bad. Okay. He goes, I'm confident the axle is ruined. Okay. So you got an axle shaft, and I have it sitting here. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, let me show you what we got going on. You do hear a pretty good growl while driving this thing. And um, I had Mo in the back seat, and you could definitely tell it was from the left rear. Put it up on a lift and verified it. You know, the old screwdriver to the ear trick. So let me just show you something here real quick. So now, down here at the wheel, let me set up my little trusty tripod here so you can actually see this. So now, obviously I haven't taken anything apart yet, but see that up and down motion? That's extreme. And I know this vehicle is like so clean, but I, I'm not quite sure. I think this axle may have been replaced at one point in its life because just judging by the studs and judging by how clean the hub flange here is, um, I don't know. Well, now, one thing, too, on a lot of Lincolns of this era, they have air suspension. He had modified this and changed it up at some point in the vehicle's life. He did the work himself. And... Um, I guess he didn't like the air ride suspension and he wanted it to handle a little bit better. It, it still has a factory ride height, but uh, it definitely, it's a nice driving car. But anyway, with the air suspension in the trunk, there's a switch on the left hand side. So whenever you have like a Lincoln that comes in or, or any top of the line Ford type product from, I'd say somewhere in the eighties, I don't remember when I started it, maybe with the Lincoln LSC, like mid 85, something in that range on up into the 2000s they had air suspension and you can actually shut the switch off in the trunk if you don't shut the switch off what happens is you put it up in the air and the suspension sees that it's up really high or it thinks it's up really high you know because of the the space in between like the wheel and, and the wheel well you know what i mean because that increases so it thinks the rear of the car is up so what happens is it lets all the air out of the system so you let it back down on the ground and now it's the thing's on the ground i don't know if you've ever seen a lincoln going down a road where it's, you know, squatted in the rear going down the road. That's because there's a problem with the uh, air suspension. Um, but anyway, if a lot of times you can start it up and eventually it'll air itself back up. But it could take a while to avoid all of that. Flip the switch, shut it off. If you forget to turn it back on, there's a warning on the dash that says air suspension. And you'd be like, oh yeah, shoot, let me turn it back on. Well, this one, the light's always on because it's off because he doesn't have the air suspension anymore. <clears throat> All right, so let me start taking it apart. It seems like whenever I get, like, one type of repair, I get, like, ten of them. Another rear end repair. So, uh, same thing on this one. I'm going to take the cover off. I'm not going to go step by step with everything on this one. But I'm going to take the cover off. I'm going to take the rear disc brakes off here. You know, just kind of like what I did on that S10. And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you taking the clip out and getting the axle out. And with the brakes out of the way, I just want you to see this, how much this thing actually moves. Quite a bit. Let's see back there. Oops. All right, let's get the cover off and drain the fluid and stuff like that, and we'll pull the axle out. Oh, I wanted to show you something. The kit he supplied, I don't know who makes it, but it's a pretty nice kit actually. This is the axle. And, uh, the tone ring is protected, which is good. And it comes with the bearing, a seal, studs, and lugs. So, yeah, nice little kit. So, hopefully the axle's right. I guess we're going to find out. Right, I got most of the bolts out of that cover. I got one left in there. I took the top ones out because i got to move this bracket. It just holds a parking brake cable or something. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is if you look closely... See if you can see it. You see all the sparkly in the oil? It's all metal filings. 
can see it down the bottom there. That's from that bearing coming apart. You see it coming out there? So I'm gonna have to clean this thing out really good with brake clean because this is gonna be a mess inside. All right, let's get this cover off of here. All right, so let me get this out of the way. Here. Now let me crack this cover open. The old Ford 88. Very good rear. Like anything else, it has its problems. But they are pretty darn durable, I will say that. So, this is a pretty simple setup. The rear end itself is not noisy like the gears in that. They're actually fine. What is this? piece of debris on there <clears throat> but if you look close you can see all the metal coming through all right so I'm gonna have to take that pin out in there get that c-clip out and get that axle out all right so the pin I told you before I usually use a bleeder wrench to get these things cracked free because they're six point and a lot of times I've seen people use 12 points on these and they round them out. I've done it too in the earlier days when I first started doing this stuff because I didn't know any better. But you learn through doing. Obviously, anything that lays lands in the um, oil drain is just below me. I'm going to be cleaning it off before I do anything with it. So the pin is good. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that so quick. Okay. So the other pin came out. No big deal. So now I was explaining in the other video with the rear end for the S10 about rotating one axle and uh, being careful because otherwise the gears move. I didn't fully explain. But if you let it keep going, you see how the bottom of that gear gets exposed? Right there? There's actually a shim underneath it. And that whole thing can fall out. You want to avoid that if you can. There, you see it? That's actually, that's a shim in there. On the gear it's basically that's that's what the gear is riding on so I just want to center it if it does fall out it's not a big deal you just gotta make sure you put it back back together the right way and then you got to make sure that these are exactly opposite of each other because you could be off a tooth you'll know because you won't get the big large uh, pin in so with that being said I am going to go to the outside over here and I'm going to push the axle inward so you should see this axle shaft here move inward now Let me go get a magnet, see if I can't get that out. All right, so let's see. Some of the, sometimes these things can be quite tricky to get out. I'm gonna try wrapping the axle in with a hammer.
it's gonna fight me the whole way. Alright. On to plan B. But really all I'm doing is sticking a pry bar in there to try to get a little more space out of it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes axles will absolutely fight you to death to come out. Like this one actually is. This one is not cooperating at all. I'm gonna try smacking the axle in a little more. You would think by now, from this thing bouncing back and forth, that it would drop. something and it's not all right plan C so sometimes you got to investigate a little further I didn't even think about it until just now but the wheel stud this is part of the parking brake mechanism you see it's hitting right there how it can go any even further so <clears throat> that should allow it to drop out and there it is There, the seat clip comes out right comes right out. Now, every once in a while, I do run into the ones where, like I said, you do have to smack it with a hammer to get it to come out. So now this should just come right out. And look at that. Or groove right in there. So what I'm going to do is I have brake clean coming for this thing. I'm going to flush this thing out. Um, I may actually just take the other side apart too. It's this way I can get it out and get any debris out that's in the axle tube and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm actually happy I pulled the right side because it turned out the axle seal was leaking. The bearing's not making any noise and the axle shaft is actually okay. There's no groove in it or anything. So I'm going to put a new bearing and a new seal on this side. And um, like I said, last year I believe it was, I put, a, I put new bearings and seals in this thing. So I don't know what, why this one's leaking. Um, I mean, it wasn't leaking bad, but it was leaking enough. You could see the buildup of crud on there. So basically, I'm going to clean all of that down, but I'm going to replace the bearings and seals. But uh, let me get those out, and what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to probably take those pinion gears out because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to clean these tubes out. Now, for this type of a job, to get that bearing and seal out, you're going to need this. It's a slide hammer with a bearing remover. So what we're going to do is take the bearing remover and you got to stick it in a hole like this because once it's in past the bearing, it'll flop like this. Now the one problem with this too is you have a tendency to make a little bit of a mess with gear oil. Let's just see. That's okay. I gotta get those chunks out of there now. This is always this is the joyful part is trying to get the chunks out. Problem is I don't have a bearing puller that's the exact correct fit. So sometimes what you gotta do, which I might have to do on this, at least I believe I'm gonna have to. What you have to do on this is on the bearing race there that's in there you got to grind down on it be careful so you don't hit the actual tube but grind down on it whack it with a chisel so this way you can actually break that cage the outer portion the race that's stuck in there and then this way you can get that out so let me try doing that so basically what i'm going to do is try this deburring tool which is basically just a carbide bit and i'm going to try to slice into the race Okay, you get the general idea. The camera's kind of in my way, so I can't really film right now. So that's what I'm going to keep doing until I get that cut through. 
All right, so I got a pretty hefty groove in there. Hopefully this will crack like I hope it will. And if you look close, you can actually see that I nicked it slightly here and I nicked it slightly on the inside there. It's really not that big a deal. You don't want to gouge into it because if you gouge into it, then it actually creates a spot where the shell or the outer race of the bearing can actually distort slightly. So I'm not too worried about that. This one, it doesn't really come to the edge. So I'm not overly worried about that. What I will do is on the seal, I'm going to put a light layer of silicone on it. So let's see if I can crack this darn thing. Always wear safety glasses when you're doing this stuff because the, the hardened steel in here, if it shatters, it can fly out like a little bullet. I don't think that did. Let me try my little slide hammer, see if it'll move at all. I don't think that moved. Or I don't think it cracked. Nope. All right, I'm gonna have to dig into it a little more. Like I said, I can't film it and do it at the same time. All right, so I dug into it a little further. I whacked it with the chisel and it did crack. So now, get my little slide hammer and hopefully this thing should come right out. Now, obviously, there's gonna be a lot of metal debris inside here and we gotta get all of that out. All right, so, I left a little nick there. I'm not concerned about it. Like I said, the where the seal rides, I'm going to um, uh, put a little bit of silicone on the seal. Now, when I had done the bearings and seals on this thing the last time, I was probably the third person to do it on this vehicle. I don't know why this thing has had so many sets of wheel bearings and seals. I have the slightest idea. And supposedly, he did a set himself. Uh, like six months after I had done it. Why? I have no idea. And why he wouldn't come back, I have no idea. I, like I said, he does a lot of work himself, so maybe he just felt like he wanted to do it. Uh, but anyway, so, you can see, that's actually fine. But I'm going to clean all of this out. Now, I'm going to take the spider gears out. I called them pinion gears before, but they're spider gears is what I meant to say. Let me pull those out. All right, so, I'm going to take these out. And like I said, you can have this off a tooth and create yourself yourself some problems so there's that there's that and like i said there is that shim i was telling you about you can see that right each side has a shim basically i'm going to put this I have a magnetic tray right behind me on the door just sticking the gears on there And then these slide out like that. And you want to put them back in in order. In other words, in the same spot they came out of. So I have everything in order behind me on the magnetic tray. Now, why did I pull this apart? Well, because what I want to do is I want to try to get rags inside the tubes from this side where the axles come through. And then I want to pull the rags through to pull the junk out the tube, not in through the tube, because then if I go in through the tube, it's going to push it into the bearings. If I took the carrier out, yeah, okay. But I'm not going to take this whole carrier out. I'm not going to bother doing that. So let me get some rags and stuff in there. All right, so what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to stuff some rags in there. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get a very long extension, maybe. Let me see. i got to see how this works out. Because every differential is a little bit different. I don't know if I can do it this way. I might not be able to. The opening is quite small. Anyway, the opening is quite small. Let me try getting a very long extension and going in through the other tube to see if I can't push that in place. Hang on. All right, for what it's worth, 
I just used a broomstick handle and stuffed it in there to shove the rag through. Now, this might not work, and if it doesn't, then I have to do it the other way and take the carrier out. But I want to get this to push the gook out of the other side. So let me set you up over here so you can watch what happens over here. Uh, let's turn that on. Actually, let's just change your angle a little bit. You can actually see the metal filings in there from when I just ground that thing out. Okay, now, let's see if I can do this to where you can see it. I'm going to stuff another rag in that hole. Now, hopefully you can hear me. Actually, what I'm going to do is let me grab a bucket, put it on the floor. Now, let's see if this starts to push that stuff out. So you see exactly what I'm talking about. Pull the rags out. Get the junk out. Of course, the broomstick is not as long as this actual shaft is. But now, there, you can see all of that, I hope, right? I guess I'll figure it out when I edit this video. But that's what I'm trying to get out of the system so it's not stuck in the tube. I want to get the heavy gook out like that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray from this side and spray brake clean in. So let me do the same thing for the other side now. Now, because there's something kind of satisfying about watching the goo come out, I figure, let me just show you on the right side also as I push the rags through. Now one tube will usually have much more oil in it than the other side and that's because the angle of the tube itself. One tube may not have any oil in it. That's always a possibility. This one had very little. Let me do this. But yeah. Lots and lots of gook. Chunks of the bearing, because that one this one broke apart too. Now we're not gonna replace these shoes. They're only parking brake shoes. He actually doesn't even use his parking brake. He said he really doesn't care. So I'm gonna come back to this side. I'm gonna force the tube, the uh Push the candle through a little further. Now what I'll do is, uh, once I get this through, and investigate, look at the tubes, because I might do it again. It really depends. Alright, let me let this thing down and let's look inside the tube. Alright, the inside of the right side tube looks pretty clear. I'm going to spray it with brake clean because then the brake clean is going to go all the way down to that end 
and it's going to fall through the bearing on that end. I just didn't want like heavy chunks of metal coming in there, but this is pretty, this is, you know, I mean, there's a little bit there, but it's, that's much, much better than it was. Let's go to the other side. Actually, it's a little, yeah, no, it's okay. It's just a little bit of, I think it's a little fleck from, see like that there, from the rag. I'm going to do the same on this. I'm going to wash this thing down with some uh, brake clean, let it come out through the bearing, and then we'll just flush out the pumpkin end there. Oops. Flush out the pumpkin end there. All right. Uh, but you know what? It's the end of the day. I'm done. I'm tired. So I'm going to continue this tomorrow. All right. So I'm back on that Lincoln, and hopefully I got the lighting situation figured out. Because I know from up to this point, some of the lighting got a little wonky. I did mention that in previous videos, uh, or in a previous video with the lower control arms. What I did was I stuffed the tube again with rags. Even though it's pretty clean, I want to get it even cleaner. So what I'm doing is, obviously, this is brake clean. And I'm just really loading this thing up with some brake clean. And then what I'm going to do is I got the broomstick handle in there and I'm gonna shove that through and hopefully we get to see more stuff coming out. Alright, let me lower this a little bit. Let me see if I can't go in a little bit further. Alright, let's try that. Now, I couldn't see what you could see up to that point, so, but here, pulling out the rags, you can still see there's shiny stuff on there, so I'm glad I did that. So there's shiny stuff on it. May have to do it another time. some pretty good shiny stuff on it. See that? Alright, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna keep doing it until it comes out clean. Alright, so hopefully this should be the last time I have to do this. And just so you know, I did stuff the rags from inside the differential into the tube because I don't want to force all the metal filing into the carrier bearings or the pinion bearings. I mean, sure, there's gonna be some in there already, but I'd rather force the majority of them out this way instead of through the bearing, because there's always a possibility of getting chunks in there that don't come out when I flush out the center section. I'm using up a whole bunch of brake clean is a lot cheaper than doing bearings again. So hopefully this will cure this problem. Still got a little silver fleck on it. It's not terrible. Much better than it was. I'm gonna probably do it one more time. Alright, let me get that last rag out of there and I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm not gonna film that part because it's the same thing all over again. Alright, so this is the driver's side now. And I got that tube packed with uh, with rags and I just sprayed it down with brake clean. Now this is the side that had the uh, bearing failure. So there should be a lot of stuff that comes out of this side.
obviously I didn't get to see what you guys saw. But I really saturated this side heavy. Oh yeah, there's plenty of plenty of material there. Got a rag stuck up here. came out much cleaner than I anticipated. I guess it must have, I guess all the heavy stuff must have come out when I did it the first time. I'm going to do this side one more time and then we're going to put everything together. So now with the tubes cleaned out, I'm going to clean out the housing area here. Now, in some differentials, you got to be mindful. Here, in this area, is like a pocket where fluid and stuff can build up. And that's like a low point where a lot of uh, metal shavings and stuff will end up. It doesn't matter if you get the bearings dry, you know, from brake clean, because you're going to be putting uh, fluid right in it. You're not going to be driving it down the road. So they're going to get wet almost immediately. because the fluid level should touch the bottoms of all the bearings in here, including in the axle tubes. So as soon as it starts to rotate, it'll get fluid on them. So within one rotation of the tires, everything should be completely lubricated. And also use this in a well-ventilated area, because woo! That stuff can get to you. Let me see, this thing might have that little pocket I was telling you about, and it does. And if you look, I don't know if you can see the glitter that's in there. So since this does have this pocket here, I'm going to do this a couple of times. See it all stuck on there? I've had people say to me before, oh, why don't you wear gloves? I, they drive me absolutely insane when I have them on. Plus, my hands sweat so bad. With gloves on, I can't even work because the gloves start slipping all over my hands. So that's the main reason I don't use gloves. Uh, I do use them occasionally. I should have probably used them on this, but you know what? I kind of can't use them and film at the same time because I can't turn the camera on and off. So let me get this cleaned up and then you kind of understand where I'm going with that. So real quick, we're going to install the bearing and the race. But what I'll show you something, I mean the bearing and the seal. What I'm going to show you here is, I mentioned this in a video last week or the week before. See that spring in there, that silver spring that wraps around? That's what creates the tension on the seal, on this style seal, to basically hold tension on the axle. I had mentioned about packing this so this way it, that, that seal, does, or that seal, that, whew, that little spring doesn't pop out. Because sometimes as you're installing these, if you hit it hard enough, you can actually jar that spring free and it falls out and it lays in the middle there and then you gotta try to figure out how to get it in place with the seal already in. Can be a pain. And I said pack it. Pack it with transmission assembly gel. This stuff right here. I've had this for a while, as you could tell. It's kind of the cases or the containers worn out. But what am I talking about? This. I already packed that one. But you pack it like that with this transmission assembly gel. You can use like Vaseline or petroleum jelly or something like that. But I prefer this because that stuff has a low melting point. So it basically liquefies pretty quickly. As soon as it starts to get some heat in it, like I, I forgot what the temperature is. But it's like when it's hot out, like 100 degrees outside, this stuff is, is pretty, pretty slick. Um, but yeah, so basically take it from this, pack it so it looks like that, and what happens is that helps keep that spring in place so it doesn't fall out, especially when you're installing it. Like I said, you got to drive these things in with a driver and a hammer. So let's go get the bearing and that seal installed. Alright, so when installing the bearing, 
here's a bearing race driver, bearing driver, seal driver. You can interchange the heads of these. Basically, you want to find one that's going to fit inside the tube. Because basically, we've got to drive this in. So we're going to take this. If you want to lube it, you can lube it. I don't know if it actually makes any difference, to be honest with you. Because it is a pretty tight press fit. And... You heard how the tone changed all of a sudden? That means it bottomed out. So now, when you go to install the seal, I'm actually going to change cones. I'm going to go to the slightly larger one. Why? Because I want it to stop when it hits there. So, I'll take the seal, get it to just partially start like that. And as you can see, it's slightly at an angle, so when I hit it, I'm going to hit towards the top edge first to try to center it. I'm basically favoring the top edge. I usually like to walk them in a little bit like that. And that's pretty much it. That's good to go. Now another thing too is when you're using a tranny assembly gel, you wind up getting some on the seal surface here, which is perfectly fine. So let me get the other side done and then let's put this thing all back together. All right, so now we're going to start installing those uh, spider gears again. Just make sure when you're doing it, make sure you have your shins where they're supposed to be. And make sure you put everything back the way it came out. If you lose track of where it came out, this is not detrimental, really. And if everything's dry, you may want to put a little bit of, like a touch, like a drop of gear lube on there. So that one's in place. Come on. That one's in place. Now, the other two spider gears, when you get them in place, show you. Can you see that? Let me see. Like that. All right, so now you have to get the other gear in exactly opposite of it. And it is very possible to put it in to where it's not opposite of it. You'll know that when you go to try to put the pin in, but you, <clears throat> you can fix it. Now, a lot of times, too, when you're trying to do this, I've seen people accidentally drop the shim. So sometimes you've got to put your hand through the backside to hold it in place. So that should be good, I think. I'll find out in a second. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. All right, let me rotate this. I don't have the axles in yet, so. But I wanted to make sure, and yes, everything's lined up. The pin should go straight in. Now, obviously, we're not putting the pin in right now. We're just test fitting. It goes into both of them. see that right yeah but it's all the way up there it's going in through the other one plus it's bottoming out here if it didn't go into the other one it would never bottom out so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take the pin back out because the axles have to go in pushing against the tranny sometimes is very difficult uh, going the other way is much easier so now I got to push the axles in and I got to catch the c-clips so let me start with that let me go grab the new axle so i can put the driver side in first now i showed you in other videos when you're installing the axles you're not what you can't see me doing this but you understand what i'm talking about when you're installing the axles don't drag it along the seal if you can all avoid it you're not going to be able to avoid all of it, but try to avoid as much as you can. All right. So there you see that axle's in place. So now let me get the C-clip in. 
And like I said, there's a flat and there's a round edge, two C-clips. Like this edge here, if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. This edge here is flat. This edge kind of has a roundness to it. It doesn't really matter, but you can judge by the witness marks how this was before. This side was sticking out, and I always like to put it to where the rounded edge sticks out. So now I push it in, I'm going to pull the axle outward, and that locks it in place. Let's get the other axle in. And then I still have to clean off these brake shoes and stuff on this side. But I'll do that once everything's assembled in terms of the axles. All right. Now, that's in. You should have been able to just see that axle pop in. Now, like I've said before, don't rotate the axles. I mean, you can a little bit, but if you rotate them, the spider gears are going to do that. So you kind of want to avoid that. So now, I'll put the C-clip in on this side. And this side was a little tight coming off for some reason. Sometimes there'll actually be an O-ring inside the groove on the axle that the C-clip fits in. All right. So now, how do you know it's all in place? Let me show you. Oops. You can't see the C-clips are sunk down below the spider gear. You can see it there. You can see it there. It's sunk into that groove. So now, we are going to put the pin in. All right, do I got get the camera where I can actually work with it. Sorry. Come on. Okay. Close enough. So now when you rotate this back, it's possible that these spider gears are going to move and not line up. Let me show you that real quick. If you look up in the hole, see that? And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the spider gears and I'm going to push the top of this in like that. And see, now it comes and lines up. All right. Now I understand why some channels have uh, people that actually do the filming for them. But you know what? I am nowhere near that point just yet. I will be eventually, I hope. So sometimes you got to manipulate it a little bit, get everything in place. Make sure you wipe everything off too as they're going together. It doesn't have to be uh, dry. Just wipe it off. And this goes through that hole that's in the pin. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing. See that there? So let me get that in. Let me get that tightened up. And then really all it is is I got to get the cover on it, fill it with fluid, clean the parking brake assemblies, and put the wheels back on it and the brakes. Or brakes on it, then the wheels. Got to do that first, right? Um, yeah, so then let's wrap this up. This should be pretty simple. So the cover's all bolted up. Now, one trick, I used a, um, I didn't I didn't show it, but I just thought about it now. One trick uh, old timers used to do back when I was first started doing this, when you're using a gasket, put a light layer of wheel bearing grease on both sides of the gasket, then install it. Because later on, when you go to take it off, it'll keep from getting stuck to everything. So that's actually what I did. I put a light layer of wheel bearing grease. I don't know why I didn't film it, but so be it. Um, anyway, if you take tags off, put them back. It just looks more professional that way. You know, although, I don't know. I just, something personal where I, I'd rather do it. So, uh, yeah, I just got to get the brakes on it. And I'm waiting for axle grease. Axle grease. Gear lube. Gear oil. I'm waiting for the gear oil to show up. I ran out. So I'm waiting for that to show up. And then I can fill it up. And then we can road test it. All right. So we're going to fill the rear differential. Here I got 80, 90. And I got the tip cut off. Basically, I'm just going to stick it in there and slowly squeeze the bottle. Now, because it's cold out and the shop is cold, this stuff comes out kind of like syrup. <clears throat> so 
but you get the idea. This is what I'm doing. Just slowly pushing it into the rear end. So let me get this filled up, and then once I get the last bit in there, I'll show you that. Now, one thing, you're just going to keep squeezing the bottle and then let go, and it'll suck the air back in. And then it'll... Oh, oh, oh. The night after Taco Bell. All right, so you know you're full when you see it oozing out like that. I'm going to turn this light on. That'll help. And you can actually see the level, the level with the hole. If you get it pouring out like it's overfilled on the hole, don't put the plug in just to block it. Because what can happen is you can overwhelm the seals, the axle seals, and you can actually create a leak that way by having it over, overfilled. Let's put the plug back in and let's go road test this. Have you ever had one of those days where it seems like nothing goes right? I mean, literally nothing. This morning I had the stud issue. Okay, straighten that out. No big deal. I get this thing all assembled. Now that was one o'clock this afternoon when I said, let's button this up and let's go for a road test. It's now 6.30. Now I get to take it for a road test. Why? Because I went to go start it. It was in neutral. I started it and all of a sudden I heard this wicked grinding noise. I'm like, what the heck? Shut it off. I mean, it only ran for a split second. I shut it off. And I'm like, no. So then I went and I put it up in the air and I verified what I thought. Stupid me. I didn't check the splines. It's a different spline count. Turns out, remember I said the, uh, I did wheel bearing or axle bearings on this thing last year. The owner blew the rear. He changed the rear. This is not the rear I did the axle bearings on. He changed the rear. This is from an 05. This car is an 02. He got the axle for an 02, forgetting that he took the axle out of an 05. He had a parts car, an 05 parts car. Different spline count. The 05 has a 30 count spline. The 02, like this, has a 28 count spline. The 28 count went directly into that spider gear and I was able to get the clip on. Had at that point I spun the gear like I or spun the axle like I did on the right side to see the gear move a little bit, had I done that, I would have realized it's not engaging. It was basically just small enough so it was floating on the inside of the splines. I have the axle here, the axle that the customer actually took it with him. But here's an axle. What I'm talking about is the number of splines there that go into the gear that's inside the differential. Those axles are from that S10. So had I, when I, when I, when you saw me put the axle in and put the clip on, if you look really close at that first axle, the driver's side axle as it goes in, if you look really close at the video, you'll notice the axle is sitting a little bit lower than the center line of the gear. That's because the end of the axle was a hair too, sh the diameter was just a hair smaller. My fault. I should have checked that. I just assumed, and that's what always happens when you assume, you get burned every time. Also, customer supplied parts. Every time I deal with customer supplied parts, I get burned. I mean, I don't know why I didn't check it. I just assumed it was right. But what are you going to do? You got to move forward. So let's hop in this thing. Let's actually take it for a ride. I haven't started it yet. I haven't done anything. I just started it up before. Let me reach in and start it. Like I said, it's in neutral. And just from the fluid coupling in the tranny, it makes the car want to move forward when you start it in neutral. Just the natural movement of the fluid in the, tra in the automatic transmission makes it want to go forward. So because there was no resistance, because the axle, the spline's never caught, it just spun it real easy. And I heard, Rah! Let's go for road testing. The funny thing that I didn't mention was what are the odds of the auto parts store having an axle for an 05 town and country, not town and country, Lincoln Town Car in stock? They had one in stock with the 30 spline axle. 
or you know, with, it was a 30 spline axle. What are the chances of that? Weird, right? Oh well. All right, going down the road. All right, so she seatbelt chime. Okay, she drove out good. Everything was fine. It was nice and quiet. So this is a long video. I'm telling you that right now. I know when I edit this thing, this has got to be 45 minutes long at least. Uh, but yeah, all right. Well, hopefully you learned something on that one. I did. All right. Well, if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.